Good morning, everybody. We thought of doing something a little different today. So today's video is going to be more about when we talked in our introduction video about seeing the, the triumphs, but also the failures. So lambing season is by far our hardest season, followed by haying season. Haying would be the second hardest. Haying is not terrible just because, I mean, we're working with weather. So obviously that's in God's control. But I mean, equipment failures are our biggest challenge really, because at some point the sun's gonna shine for a day or two or more during haying season. It just, you know, it's summer, it's just how the seasons work around here. But for lambing, it's much harder because we have so many things that'll happen. We have moms that are awesome moms that take care of their babies that, are, you know, their babies will cry and they'll actually actively go look for them. But we also have moms that aren't very good moms. We have um, moms that are first time moms that they just don't know really what to do and they kind of struggle through it and you can help them as much as you you could try to help them, but it just doesn't always pan out because they really are just not sure why this little thing fell out of them and why it's trying to suck on them now. So we're going to have a, a bunch of different compilations in this video and some pictures and just kind of show you of where it goes, you know, from, you know, the high points where, Hey, mom has twins. They're both healthy. They're both doing well. And mom's taking care of them to the other end of the spectrum where, you have mom gave birth, but they're stillborns. They didn't even have a chance. And there's a lot of variations that cause it. Some of it's disease, some of it's nutrition. Even though you provide all the nutrition that an animal needs, it doesn't mean that it always gets it because some of the animals are stronger than others and they'll push them away. But I tell you this because there are some scenes that are in this video that are going to uh, hurt your heart a little bit. Nothing that we can do, we can't control it, but we do think it's important that other people see it. A lot of people think that, um, not everybody, but there are several people that think farming is easy, where we're always gonna have a good hay crop, we're always gonna have lots of food for our animals to eat, our animals are always gonna produce, our animals are always gonna be good moms, and we're guaranteed, you know, if we have 100 head of ewes, we're guaranteed 200 lambs going to the sale barn the next year. That's far from the case. So we just feel like it's important for the world to really see and understand farming much better because we take all of our animals, I mean, we take good care of them here, but at the end of the day, we know that this right here is essentially where they're gonna end up. Now this is bacon. But same concept with the animals. We know what their purpose is, but still while they're here, we want them to do well, we want them to live well, and we want all of them to survive, not just because of money, but because for us, it hurts whenever we have to either put one down because we can't, uh, can't bring it back to good health, or if one dies, like the babies especially, because the babies are very cute, they're fun to play with, but it's a reality that we know not all of them are going to live we know that things are gonna happen, whether it's predators, illness. Um, sometimes it's just freak accidents. They, they accidentally get trampled by mom when they're trying to feed. So there's just all kinds of things that happen to them. So stick around and just understand that there are gonna be some images that aren't pleasant. Now you'll see why they're Chrissy's sheeples.
So this mama just had a set of twins and I was lucky enough to be out here when it happened. She's being a really good mama and getting them nice and clean. What you've also noticed, so there's a few things I'm checking right now. One, she's suckling very well. I found this lamb out in the uh, pasture all by herself. We had three that gave birth today when we weren't home. I don't know who's the mom. I don't know. Uh, I tried integrating her with the three moms there. None of them wanted nothing to do with her. So that tells me that she's probably going to be an orphan because it's very difficult to make them latch or bond rather. I mean, you can lock them up together in a stall, but that's kind of dangerous for the baby because if the mom doesn't want to have it, she's not going to have it and she's going to keep beating the baby up. So at this point, it's better just to keep her as a ewe lamb, or sorry, as a uh, bottle baby. Uh, since she's a ewe lamb, we will be keeping her. So this actually works out in a benefit a little bit for us for the simple fact that uh, she is going to be one that we keep and then bottle babies are very gentle with us. They trust us because we feed them as babies and they have a very fond memory of us, just like you would with your mom. Um, I am noticing that as she's suckling, I can feel her teeth, and that might be one of the reasons that mom kicked her away to begin with. It is not completely uncommon, but if, uh, if you're not somebody that mom enjoys feeding, it's a little different for, the, for animals. They don't have a conscience about, ah, this baby's going to die. They don't care. They're a little concerned about their comfort. But I gave her, she probably drank maybe about an ounce or so, maybe two ounces of that. And the reason I don't want to keep feeding her is because of the simple fact that mom only produces about two ounces of milk per feeding. And a newborn lamb will not have a whole lot of stomach space. So if you heat milk up where I have an endless supply of it, she will keep drinking and she can stretch her stomach. She can pop her stomach. Um, there's a lot of risks involved. The other thing I got to be careful of is that I got to make sure that she's feeding with her neck up because if it's down, she could end up pulling the milk into her lungs. We don't want that to happen. Um, so there's a, there's a few things that we got to, that we're going to have to watch. The other thing I got to watch is she's going to have to have a heat lamp just for the simple fact that it's too cold outside for her. Well, not right today. It isn't because it's 50 degrees. However, tomorrow it's going to be very cold and potential snow and ice again. So it will be too cold for her to be by herself. As you can hear, she's very adamant about getting something. So this does happen and it's not a tragedy because we caught it. It's, it's more unfortunate when we don't catch it just for the simple fact that um, a ewe lamb, depending on a few characteristics, so bread, you know, the bloodline, um, are they bred? All these different things come into play whenever you're purchasing a full grown ewe. And we just consider the cost of a full, a ewe lamb to be the same cost as a full grown ewe for us because we're going to keep them. We use them to grow our flock. We also use them to, uh, replace older ones that are either not lambing, um, you know, they're only giving singles, um, reasons like that. Just like anything else, you want your herd to be strong. You want them to be the best at everything. And that includes breeding. Um, I don't know what the name is going to be for this girl. She, I tell you what, post in the comments below on what you want her name to be. And we will pick 
a winner from the comments below. That's what we'll do. The other thing you can do is if they're not, if you're trying to bottle feed them and they're not wanting to suckle, if you rub their butt like this, that's one way that mom encourages them to eat. That will encourage them to eat too. So, fun fact for you. Uh, other than that, I've got to keep get. I've got other stuff I got to get done. So, and usually if they're getting milk, they will wag their tail. So you can see right now she's suckling, but there's no milk, so she's not wagging her tail. Lots of things to learn from them. <laughs> Tip it up. She won't take it. There yeah. she is. Now hold it up so that she doesn't get a bunch of air. Oh, yes, yes, this is the So Cheyenne is feeding one of our bottle babies that we just had today. Um, what we, we mix up our own milk supplement for when we have bottle babies. We use a gallon of whole milk, a cup of evaporated milk, and a cup of buttermilk. And we mix that all together and feed that to the lambs. And it works really, really well. Way better than a lot of the powder supplements that you can get. Will she stand up for you, Cheyenne? You can let her stand if she'll let you, if she wants to. Can't, do I have to take it away from her real quick? No. Just see if she'll stand up, hold it up. There you go. We want, we want her to do most of it on her own because we're going to switch hey. her over to a bucket in a couple days. Hey, it's right here. Help her find it. Okay, oh, you need to hold it to her. Put it right in her face. Oh, okay. Hold it up, Cheyenne. She can't get it if it's not up. There you go. Don't pull it away from her. Oh, yeah. Yes, you are. She's pushing it. You have to push it back to her. You can't pull it away. You peeing on me. Oh, well, move. Yeah, you peed on me. It's funny how they wag their tails when they're drinking. Yeah, I think I fool. Can we keep her in our yard? No, she's Don't going to go where the heat lamp is because she doesn't have anybody else to help keep her warm. He's drinking the right. <laughs> Trying to shove the whole thing in her mouth. She's hungry. I'm starving. My mommy didn't feed me. <laughs> Good morning. I came out this morning to check on our bottle baby who is seeming to be taking from the bucket now. So that is a good sign. That saves us a lot of time from having to actually physically feed her a bottle. I'm getting ready to refill the bucket for her because I'm sure she's running low. We just gave her a little bit last night to get her through the night to make sure she was drinking on it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up for her so that she has milk throughout the day while I'm at work. And I hope you guys have a great day. So there we have it. She is successfully trained on the bucket.
comes the second one. I know, Mama. Come on. these two twins. I'm gonna let mama get them all cleaned up. So if you see this one right there-ish. She was laying down and uh, when they're laboring and about to give birth, they'll lay down somewhat on their sides, sometimes on their belly, but generally on their sides. Obviously, they're uncomfortable just like anybody else that would be giving birth. And so they kick their legs a little bit, they'll be breathing heavily. So she was just doing that, but everybody scared her. She's about to lay back down. Walk over here and check it out. Stop yelling, she's trying to give birth. Shh. Hi, Betty. Hi, Tugger. See how she's moping around. And sometimes they'll dig at the ground, you know, kind of making a, a bed essentially to, to give birth on. But you can see she's a little, a little bit of pain. Hey, PJ. You guys probably remember PJ and Chugger and Betty from the Nativity scene. There she goes, she's digging. That's a pretty good indicator. So this 
episode where we're talking about how she'll lift a leg. And she's putting her head up in the air. She's showing signs of contractions. So let's see what she does. So in this clip, the wind made it incredibly hard to hear what we were saying when we were describing the deformities in the baby. You can see that it has a spinal issue. You can see that up, Chris, I got on it. some spots when we rotate it over, everything appears to have formed, but the spine is clearly twisted. Whether it was from like that inside the body or if it happened during birth, we're not sure. Um, she ended up having another one just like this one that was the same way. We liked it and we didn't help pull it. So we're assuming that it was a deformity in uh, the babies themselves and they were just stillborns. We don't like to pull the lambs, but if we don't and they stay in there too long, they can actually cause harm to mama and they can even cause death to mama. So we don't have a choice a lot of times when we have to pull them.
laboring for so long. And then the uh, back leg been extended. So you guys remember in that first video, Welcome to Freedom Farmers video, we talked about celebrating all of our triumphs. Unfortunately, there's going to be some trials along the way. It happens. Mama seems to be in good health with this. Tired, obviously, from laboring. It's okay. She had some deformities. It had completely closed up. But it's okay. There'll be more. Yeah. A lot to be born yet. So three have given birth and only 60 something to go. Look at the size of this baby. Newborn. Huge. Only a few hours old. He's a ram lamb and he's incredibly tall. I don't see how he can walk with them legs. By far the biggest baby we've ever had born. And if I was to guess, he probably weighs probably 9 or 10 pounds. He's definitely not the smartest. But most of the babies aren't. They learn. Suck on mommy's ear. Look how tall he is. Just for reference, that you probably weighs about 150 ish pounds. How tall is the you? Well, actually, the wall is. I don't know how tall it is back there. Concrete's not three and a half feet, but two and a half is three feet. This is a huge baby. Shocked at how big this is. Chris has also got a point that we were shocked at that it was able to give birth to that thing without help. Home. Massive baby. So as you can see, it's been a very eventful lambing season already. We are not a quarter of the way through lambing, and we have had everything from the typical birth that we like to see, where mom gives birth, no issues, and cleans her babies up and feeds them. And then, you know, to the far opposite end where mom, not only does she need help getting the babies out, and Chrissy had to pull the lamb, but the lambs were stillborns. And then we've had the largest lamb that we have ever had born. That lamb probably weighed close to 13 pounds and is about twice the size height-wise as our first baby that was born this year. Um, so it's, it's quite the roller coaster. But we'll get through it just like we do every year. There, uh, there's always going to be ups and there's going to be just as many downs the uh, key is, is that we just keep our faith in God and know that at some point there's going to be sad news and then at other points there's going to be great news. So we just keep going through it every year and that's how almost all farms are. That's how they put food on your table. That's how they put food on my table too. So I appreciate everything that all the farmers do and uh, I know it's a hard job. But 
it takes it does take a special person to be able to put up with it it's depressing at times and other times it's enlightening but either way I think every day it kind of brings you closer to God and understanding how precious life really is so for this week thank you for watching uh, please comment below for the uh, bottle lamb's name and we will pick one from the comments other than that and we hope you have a blessed week and we will see you again next week thank you So if they like the video, what should they do? Mm. If you like the video, push the thumbs up button. Okay, and then what if they have questions about the video? What could they do? If you have questions about the video, leave in the put a <laughs> leave a comment down below. And then if they like the content on our channel, if you subscribe. So think about it. If you subscribe, you could see that cute mug almost weekly. Pretty good deal. Bye-bye.